Right, hi everyone. Today's job, I've got a bit of machining to do. So we've got this drive shaft to fit into the centre of this flywheel. wheel. So it's a, I think it's a Cummins 6BT flywheel, wheel and the customer wants to use it to use the engine to power the slurry pump. So he needs this to be driven off the centre of there. That's just like your standard six blind PTO shaft. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hub up that will bolt to the flywheel wheel using the flywheel wheel bolts. And then it'll have a, like a hub on the back that will line it up with the center of the flower wheel and then I'll machine the top side or this side of the hub down so this will fit into it and then I'll weld round it and also weld round the inside of it so that's already had something welded to it so it's not ideal but that's what he supplied and that's what he wants doing so that's what I'm going to do so first job I'm going to flame cut a circle out about 140 mil in diameter that was some 30 mil plate and it gives me enough thickness to go inside there and it'll be 10 mil like flange for the bolts and then this will be spaced 10 mil off sunk into a hole so it's lined up true so i'm going to use my magic eye profiler to cut out that circle and the reason why there's two circles is because there's already a smaller one there and then i've just used the same center and mark to draw a bigger circle so it's the outside one that i'll be following and then I'm just going to use a bit of off-cut 30mm plate that I've got. Profile out of there. So that's that cut out. While that's cooling down, I'm just going to put this in a lathe. Turn that down, just true it up and face that surface off as well. So then I know that everything there is true. Right, so I've got that mounted in the lathe now. True it up off that surface there because that's a machine surface. So now I'll skim that off and then face that side off. So that's that bit done. I've got a nice flat surface to work off now and then a true outside diameter. So that's all for that bit for now. So I'm just gonna dress the edges off on this bit of plate. Just get rid of them uh, nasty bits with the grinder and then it's a bit kinder on the lathe tool and then we can put it in the lathe and machine the first side of that
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole through the middle of it, smaller than that, but big enough so I can get a weld through on the inside as well. So it'll be like a 40, about 42 mil hole I'll drill right through the middle of it. So that's the first bit done. What I need to do now is bar out a hole for that to sit into. It's be 10 mil deep hole, whatever diameter that is.
So that's this side made. And that sits in there like that. I put good weld prep around it so I can weld that round. I weld round the inside as well. And then once I've got that welded up, I can hold it in the lathe again and then do all the machining on this side. And that'll sit in there like that. And then I'll have to drill it for the bolt holes. So I'll give it a clean up. I'll get all my grubby little finger marks off it. And then I think I weld it up with a TIG. I love an excuse to get the TIG welder out. So I'll give it a clean up and then we'll, uh, well, preheat it as well. We'll preheat it. Give it a good preheat and then weld it round. And I'm not too worried about welding that because I, I don't think it's been heat treated. It's soft. You can mark it with a file. You can see all of the bits and marks and that on it. So I think that's just ordinary steel. You know, it's not hardened. So. So I've been round it with a TIG. I don't think it looks too bad to say I don't have much TIG experience. I might go round it again just to fill it, fill it in. Ow! That's what, fill it in a bit better. And I'll weld round the inside with the MIG, I think, because I won't be able to get in with the TIG very well. So I've got that welded round the inside as well. Yeah, I could do with I could do with post heating really, but 
kit we need to buy one of them little ovens. I never got them to buy one, buy them one yet. But anyway, I'll turn it the other way up again. It's sat on this bit of tube, so then there'll only be there won't be much contact area with anything, so there's no heat being drawn out of it. You know, through contacting. If I had that sat straight on the bench, then the bench would draw a lot of heat out of it, which you don't want. And then that's the second well down the top. I'm pretty pleased with that, I don't think that's too bad. I mean, it's no walk in the cup or anything, but I don't think that's too bad. There's one place... Where is it? Oh, one place where I just went over the edge a little bit. Right, so that's had time to cool down now. So I can put it back in the lathe, hold it by the shaft again, and I can machine this side down. I'll clean up the outside diameter, turn it down a little bit, and then I'll turn down a step on this side, so then there'll be a little hub that fits into the side, inside of the flour wheel, into where the bearing usually goes. Right, so that's back in the lathe again now. I've trued it up off that surface again, so we can start turning this down now. So I did have it mounted in with a copper soft jaws but I've tried to take two heavier face cut off and it moved slightly so I've taken them out and just mounted it back on the splines and nipped it up tight so yeah, I'll have to take a bit bit less of a face cut off I think I was taking the cut off that way but there's going to be a lot of cuts to get all the way down to the middle so I decided to take phase cuts off as instead and then there won't be as many cuts to do. Alright so I've got that just roughed off, just rough cut down to nearly size. Now I'm gonna turn this bit down to 52 mil to fit inside the flower wheel and then I'll put a finishing skim over that, finishing skim over outside diameter and then just put some chamfers on everything. Right, so that's that machine down. That fits nicely into the middle of the flower wheel. So we'll turn it over now and then use a transfer punch to mark those hole centres and then we'll drill them. I think I'll sit it in there like that in that bit of tube. The flower wheel on the top the other way up so I can mark the holes through. Right, so to drill the holes, I've sat the three jaw on the uh, drill, and then I'll stick that in there, nip it up, and then it gives me a nice flat surface to be able to drill the holes.
So that's all the holes drilled, sat back in the flywheel again, and they all line up. So this is a flywheel bolt out of, well, I have a, I have a 6BT engine and this is out of my engine, so I've just borrowed it to try it. So the customer will have to get some longer bolts. The, the flange on there is 8 mil thick, so they'll just have to get some 8 mil longer flywheel bolts, and then it will just bolt on. Ah, stuck. Yeah, so if they just get some 8 mil longer bolts, then it'll just bolt on, same as it would do normally. It's not ideal having this shaft welded in, but because it's going at engine RPM, I don't know what RPM it'll be running at, 1500 maybe, there'll be less torque on it than what it would be if it was running at 540 or 1000, like it would be, you know, what it's designed for on a tractor. So, you know, I'm pretty happy that it, it should be strong enough Give it a quick clean up and then spray a bit of red oxide on it and then that'll do. Right, so I sprayed a bit of red oxide on it and stop it going rusty. And that fits nicely into the middle of there. So yeah, just a bit of a disclaimer. Um, I'm not a trained machinist, so I might not follow all the proper procedures that are proper machinist would do so yeah don't take it as a tutorial it's just a how I've done it video not a how to do it video but yeah it's finished oh do you like my new work van when you stick it up snowball engineering um, that's just one we broke at a tractor pulling event last year we were doing jumps with it and we broke it so we had to buy it between four of us and I've got the job of getting it fixed we're nearly at 10,000 subscribers as well at the uh, this moment in time as I'm filming this we've got 9,578 subscribers since Christmas so yeah thanks to everyone for watching my videos and thanks to everyone that subscribed um, without you guys, well, I'd still be here doing the same job, but at least now I've got people to share it with. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.